This is for the creators. Welcome back to the show, guys. So last month, I was invited down to Red Bull to speak to some entrepreneurs on their Amafico Academy. The Amafico Academy is an eight-day course for grassroots social entrepreneurs in the UK who are making a positive difference in their community. The Academy aims to give them inspiration, mentorship, practical skills and tools they need to take themselves and their projects to the next level. There were 15 social entrepreneurs taking part in the Academy and I was lucky enough to feature a couple of them on the show. Today I sit down with Alvin Ousu, who is the co-founder of the Advantage Group, which is changing the future of young people from underrepresented backgrounds. The Advantage Group aims to break barriers and transform the narrative of young people. They provide a number of fun and impactful workshops tailored to the needs of specific groups of young people. This has been done through their three-day annual academy, their school tour and their year-long development program. In doing this, they have addressed the problem at a very early age, between 15 and 19. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Alvin Owusu. How you doing, man? I'm not too bad. Good. How's your week been? It's been good. It's um, it's nothing like I've ever experienced before. So I've been on like incubators, accelerators before, um, but this is this is a this is different. Like you're create they created a whole world, so you haven't even experienced Bradford. Like you get picked up, you go to your apartment, you go in the uh, and then you go for breakfast, and then after breakfast you have you meet Reggie Yates and Slider Cuts, and then after that you go <laughs> to the cinema, and then your face is in the cinema, and like everyone there is for you. That like, is it's super unreal. You've been picked up out of. Drop me in thing in that's, Bradford. That's crazy. So just tell me a bit about um your your upbringing. My um, upbringing. Yeah, I mean you described it as being a, a triple threat. Um you know, you know I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh someone's like okay, someone it has been described what do you as being it? A, um so I think the triple threat I think it's from something I said a long time ago mm. and it's someone that they collected it from somewhere on the okay. internet. But the triple threat being um when you grow up in a house that is obviously low income, mm. um, and then single parent, and then in I a, think like a disadvantaged area, and as well. then it's a disadvantaged area. Yeah, mm. I think that is the triple threat because obviously when you look at like what like the predictors of success, it usually is the area you're from, your household income, your um, how many people in your house uh, household, or um, your ethnicity. Often, yeah, I don't yeah. know why I didn't count that. Quadruple threat is too much. Quadruple threat. It's just too Triple much. Triple threat's yeah, got yeah. a better ring to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what do you think was a, a disadvantage growing up? Um, a number of different things. Um, so obviously, um, given, so I'm bo- born in Hackney, mm. um, council state, blah, 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 like the typical story. Right. And I think what that meant for me personally was uh, you can't see past it. Um, and then, so you have you have no role models. You don't have like high aspirations, even if you are academic, even if you are good at football, even if you are a decent rapper, there's very, very little people who are right next to you. Mm. that You can say, okay, yeah, he came from here. I want to be like him. Um, So I think that was one of the first things. Um, Around um, one parent, one parent often means, um, and this is obviously shout out all the single parents, you you are still perfectly capable, but often what that means is that, so my mum had to work quite a bit, so a lot of the early development stages were reliant on me and the streets, Mm. (laughs) if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah. yeah. you have to kind of find your own uh, advantages. Exactly that, that and then you learn to navigate the world um, based on, other people's perceptions of the world. So then if you, like what people saw as a young black man um, in the UK from Hackney, mm. you buy into it, even if that isn't truly truly who you are or who you want to be, you just buy into it, if that makes sense. And like, so you let other people's perceptions shape you rather than it being like this holistic development from the home and then the outside, the good environments and mm-hmm. all of that. So what sparked the idea of the Advantage Group then? Um, so I think in 2017, after I was kicked out for the third time, I was kind of like, hey, well, this is not it. Like, this isn't this isn't the way I want to live. And at the same, roughly around the same time, both my brothers brothers were out of university as well, so they hadn't completed. And I said, yeah. Like older or younger? And one older, one younger. Okay. Yeah, we used to stress our mum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like it. What um, was you kicked out for? I was kicked out. So at that point, um, it was just sort of for like non-attendance like I just I didn't go and then I had the board meeting at the end with the deans and they said things like um, students like you tend to fail you look like you don't care so why should we keep you you said oh, really? a number of like crazy things and I just said yeah it. like this isn't the institution that I want to be in anyway 
I don't like uni, I don't like you, and then I got kicked out. Mm. So um, so after the third time I got kicked out, I kind of decided that this this one, there's a trend. So like, this wasn't just my issue. It was a problem for like a lot of people like me, who looked like me, who sounded like me, who walked mm. and talked like me. So like, they might, and I think in trying to explain to my mum, because obviously I got caught and my mum found out and I got yeah. in trouble. In trying to explain to my mum, I wanted to be able to explain to her, cool, why is this happening? Why is this happening? So obviously, in order to like deflect accountability, I was like, statistically, it was, <laughs> <laughs> I'm more likely to get kicked out than any. I'm more likely to get dropped, drop out. I'm, I'm less likely to achieve, less likely to get a grad job after um, university. So, so what's the point? So what is the point, mm. if that makes sense? Um, and then, so I just went through that period of just being out. That's probably the longest time I'd been out. I was out of education for like six, seven months. And that was just the whole development period. But I was, I never let go of those facts. And I realised, that like some of the main reasons that I did get kicked out and the reasons I'd consistently got into trouble were I didn't have role models. There was no representation, no visibility of like black young, black male role models or whatever. So I was thinking, how do I how do I create that for myself? Because I had to sort myself out. Like yeah. I couldn't be a yeah. bomb or anything. So how do I sort that self out for me? Um, and then I started to get mentors and I got back into university Then I started getting the internships and whatever started getting I got first in my first year and then it was like okay cool this kind of works for me how do I help other people because mm. it was simple it was difficult and I worked hard but it was simple enough and I felt like when I got access to that information I was aware of the problem got access to the information what can I build to like help other people right yeah so you mentioned that you got a mentor yeah. um, at that stage so you're out of education for seven months and you yeah. made a decision that, look, I need to sort myself out. Yeah. How did you go about finding it? Because you said that there wasn't really any role models. How did you yeah. then find a role model? So I think what it was, like my first mentors, I didn't even know them. It was just people that I decided to look up to, like right. actively look up to. So these guys on the internet, like, so this guy, Joshua Bright, mm -hmm. I felt like he was like, he proposed like the first like young black man that I saw. So he's probably like not that much older than me, 27. Didn't know him. I know him now. Mm -hmm. Didn't know him that well. Um, and it was just like, I saw him. I saw what he had achieved. I went on his LinkedIn, saw the backdrop and sort of like plotted my life around a lot of these other guys. Okay. This guy, Victor Azubike, like just a number of different young black men. I saw you guys are shelling in this space. Um, so you kind of reverse engineer exactly, his career path. Exactly that. And props to them they are fairly visible but only as visible as a student can be while you're doing your own thing so sure. see, I had to actively look but then those guys became my like my my online mentors even though they didn't know they were mentoring me because they share like a lot in real time to help the community I think that's quite key what you just said as yeah. well because um you know we live in a day and age where you can just pick your mentors you don't necessarily need to ask 100%. research just everyone's putting out lots of content yeah. um and lots of advice just listen and and take the action. Like you it's don't have there. to email someone to say, "Can you be my mentor?" Because they're only going to tell you what they're telling the world for free anyway. Genuinely, like, and it was like I'm a big fan of like do the work. If that makes yeah, sense. man. And so yeah, it was literally. I had seven months. I had nothing. And I think before then, I didn't understand like the idea of like going for a coffee chat anyway. So like, mm. so it was sort of. I don't know, like big myself up. It was kind of sort of out of fear. Sort of out of. There's loads of information. I'm kind of good at research, given the research proposal that I gave to my mom. Right. Not to get in trouble. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let me just use that and just scan their life and how are they talking, how are they walking, and how are they. That did cause a few problems for myself in terms of identity. But like, I definitely built my early, the early stages of Tag and myself mm. were built off, off of these guys. So, what is Tag? Um, so, Tag, what we try, it's a social enterprise where we try to transform the lives of young people from underrepresented groups by helping them to realize their potential. And so we affect this change through like acad summer academies, hackathons. We go to schools um, and just deliver a lot of like employability initiatives, but that were built for these groups. Um, so they like we've considered inclusion. So we've considered like young black women um, or young women of color struggle often with um, confidence mm -hmm. um, or struggle, struggle often with conflict resolution as they're told they're too aggressive. Yes. So we build sessions um, to help them overcome these things, if that makes sense. So brilliant. like really, really tailored to, I guess, what they're struggling with. Yeah, that's brilliant. So it's kind of, it sounds like the process that you went through. Yeah. You've kind of made that into a, a program so it can kind of fast track other people so they don't have to go through that exact same exactly the, that. The pain. And the identity crisis. Yeah. But talk to me about that that part before we go into about the the program itself. But yeah. you said you had a bit of a identity yeah. crisis. This is super interesting. Um, 
not because of me, but just because in general, yeah. I think um, when you so we predominantly work with um, black students, mm. um, and I think when you are trying to advance the community, um, often what that means is people are trying to raise the culture at the same time, right? Um, and for everything that we hold dear to a culture, and a culture means different things for a lot of people, yeah. Um, and I think that's what happened to me, whereby I, um, I was in trying to advance myself. What that meant was everything that I held deal in terms of like the way I speak is mm. um is homage to the people that I've grown up with, the people that taught me what I know. But I wanted all of that gone. I wanted I didn't want to walk the same, I didn't want to talk the same. Oh, okay. I didn't want to surround myself with any of those people. You went from one one extreme um, to the other. Exactly right. that that and I, <clears> I couldn't surround myself. But two of my brothers, so one of my brothers is an Afrobeat dancer, one of them is an Afrobeat producer. Okay. And so like that was a pivotal point. Every, anyone knows me. There's videos on YouTube. No one will ever see them, but I'm skanking hardcore. Mm. You'll never see me do that now. And I think it was a lot of the time that was because in order to advance the community, I felt like I had to let, let all of that stuff go. But I, mm. I, I wish I brought more of it along with me. So obviously in that in that process, I did struggle with like, what is it actually, what is what does black and successful look like? Is it just like a black person that is assimilates to middle class norms and values or mm. is it... Is it just me being doing what I've, I need to do? You being successful? Yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? And yeah, it is, yeah. it's the second answer, is me just being successful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But where there's not many examples of that, it's hard to say, like, all right, yeah, I need to do yeah. A, B, and C. Because obviously, if you're seeing people on LinkedIn, yeah. so obviously suits, suits and ties and stuff, you're like, okay, this is how I have to be yep. in order to get there. Yeah. So no, it's good that you, that you went through that. That's yeah. why I wanted to kind of drill down on mm-hmm. that because I think that's going to be helpful for mm-hmm. people. Um, so... Uh, stu- do you call them students? Um, yeah. Okay, so a student signs up for um, the Advantage Group. Yeah. Uh, and they go through, is it like a three day academy yeah. that you have? Um, yeah. What do they, they get out of that? What um, advantages do they leave with after those three days? Cool. So the academy is um, super important. One of the best things I think we do because over the three days, students are challenged. So the last um, academy we did was with Facebook. So we challenged these young people to build a business that solves problems in society, in pro- problem, big problems in fashion, e.g. sustainability issues, e.g. cultural appropriation. Um, so how do you build a business to overcome these things? Mm. So they spent two days and then they, they um, created a deck and then they pitched to senior Facebook employees. And I think that was cool because now these young people have a metric to show to people. They say, cool, so I led a team of 10 mm to deliver this and this is my deliverable and this is what I achieved. I won this and now I'm on the accelerator with X, Y, and Z. Does that make sense? Incredible. Like, whereas um, I think sometimes when you do, so I think everything, the academy is just focused on like, helping the young people to build metrics because their CVs don't look like that and mm. they traditionally wouldn't have, like where do you get that work experience as a 15 year old? So we like just come packed it into the three days. It's um, amazing. Other than that, so around a lot of the this year's academy was like values, um, like leading with character. So obviously teaching young people to be leaders, but like lead in a way that you help others to rise with you as well. Because mm. obviously um, in me, so back to the identity thing, in me trying to like become who I wanted to become, I wasn't thinking about everyone else around right. me. It was just like, I need to get myself to the top floor, Canary Wolf. Right. Um, but then this is the lift can be sent back down. So obviously mm-hmm. teach how to like create sessions around that. So we, and then we just cover the basic competencies like CVs, cover letters, public yeah. speaking, um, yeah. just so that the foundation is there and then you just build on top of that. It's amazing. It's amazing exposure as yeah. well, especially at that age. What's the age group that you target? Um, 15 to 19. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. So have you had any obstacles in creating the Advantage Group? Um, yeah. Like any resistance like from potential partners? Or it's not easy just to like call up Facebook or email them and just say, look, I've got this thing. You know, it's not as hard as you think it is. Um, mm. I think what is actually harder is to get into schools. Um, yeah. Because I think schools don't see it as, especially during the early stages, if you're in year eight, your teacher doesn't understand why, or year nine, your teacher doesn't understand why you might need to miss school um, because that takes away from you doing your education and seeing your GCSEs, et cetera, and getting the grade. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't understand the link between people seeing, uh, being actually able to see what is at the end of education affecting like that increase in grades right now. They don't see how it is their responsibility that like the 
a disparity we see between like BAME um, employment and obviously white employment, mm. they don't see how they can affect that now. I think the, the priority is just we need to teach them to get good grades. And yeah, that, exactly. It? Yeah, yeah, so I'm not a priority for them. So that was a little bit difficult. In terms of pitching the value of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. Exactly. How did you then get past that? Because you do, you've partnered with some schools. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you, my co-founder, um, Tumashe, she's... Um, doesn't really take no for an answer to be completely honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, she, yeah, yeah. She just marched into the schools um, and like she's very personable and so I, that isn't the side that I think I deal with right. best. I was definitely focused on the like building corporate partners because mm. I feel like they saw me as um, a friendlier face because I was on the, the shiny suit to the top of the thing. Right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. So it was kind of easier for me to speak that language. Yeah, playing to your strengths though. Yeah, That's definitely. very key, very yeah. key. So, yeah, so you mentioned like partnering with corporates. Um, so you've created like a pipeline or a fast track um, yeah. into that world yeah. for your uh, for your graduates. What um, What's your like favorite success story from someone that's gone through the academy and then gone into the corporate world? Ah, uh, so I don't, we have, I think, so it's, a, it's been a year and a half Um and then, so we haven't got anyone into employment just yet. Okay. Because it starts, like, they're usually 15, 16. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So then, and even if you're 19, you're going to, like, second year university. Mm. But my favourite success story, <laughs> because they could all potentially listen to this and they know who they are. Okay. Um, I'm okay. trying to think. But there is there are a number of things. There, there are times, and we have different... Um, goalposts for different people sure um, exactly so there was one of my absolute absolute favorites um his was he was kicked out of um college and then he was kicked out of another college and now he's in college right. and then he finished his first year and now he's got a job and he worked in something he worked full-time this summer and he had a bit of money in his pocket so he mm. didn't have to do x y and z i'm super proud of him and That's obviously amazing. now he's using that money that he raised um to book studio time to like get his music career like started and i actually that is a, a massive success story. Um, Sounds quite similar to yours. Yeah, yeah. no way. Well, you, could, you can't tell him that. You'll get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, and then you have other guys who completely smashed their GCSEs or other guys who, so one guy, Israel, I know he'd love me to, for me to say his name. Israel off, got an offer from like, to do an apprenticeship from Facebook, JP Morgan, wow. Deloitte, like dumb names, literally. And like, there were situations in which, um, like the night before, we just do like one hour, two hour coaching sessions yeah. um, just to make sure that he was right. And then so to see all of that manifest was really cool. That's incredible, man. Yeah. And it, this is all happening in 18 months. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. It's hell of it's, a ride. It is, it is. Yeah. That's, it can be overwhelming though. Yeah, right? yeah of yeah. course, of course. Um, I mean, over that 18 months, is has any... Because being an entrepreneur is not easy yeah. at all. And, you know, failure is a part of it. Sure. Um, have you is has there been like a failure that's taught you the most? Um, I don't know if it's taught me the most, but I know the most um, <laughs> the most prominent failure for me is that we launched a mentorship scheme. Um mm. and then so we got a lot of people to sign up to be mentors and then we had a few young people to be mentees, um, and then we tried to pair them and then the mentees just did not take to it. Like the yeah, so the young people didn't take to it. Really? So I had my friends who were undergrads and who had completed and the young people just thought, like, I don't know you. This seems like extra work. My GCSEs are of incredible importance right now. Right, right. Um, they think, literally, if you speak to a young person that does GCSEs, they're the busiest people in the world. Like, mm -hmm. like there's so much stress, so much yeah, thing. Yeah. And you're thinking, ah, oh, like, but I get it. Um, mm. So yeah, there was just a number of different things where we realised in terms of we couldn't give um, phone numbers and texting a young person is definitely the most effective way to communicate right. more than email. And then, so there was no real platforms that we could do this safely, like mm, mm. Um, without me getting into trouble. Like, yes. So in theory, the idea was amazing and like there was interest there, but practically that didn't pan out. Um, mm. And I think what that taught me Cause we did that. we didn't even test we just rolled it out yeah. um, and I think what that taught me was like don't make assumptions or test assumptions at least because you can make assumptions because we have a bit of experience with young people but testing assumptions I think is of incredible importance 100% yeah. definitely test the assumptions as soon as you can yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 because that like and we that was something that we kept we continued to try and then we spoke to people building different platforms because like okay what if we create an online app and like 
we just carried it on, carried it on, carried it on. Mm. But when you spoke to the young people, where's their real desire? Not so much. Um, they want, um, I think what the young people want is to be sort of like what we have at Amapuco, to be immersed and to be taken because they're, a lot of them, secondary school is spoon feeding and then when you leave to go to college, you get that off. So I think they're not used yeah. to making that big commitment to take on their own personal development mm. and that's what mentorship did mean because I think as someone who's been mentored, you have to sort of lead a relationship very often. Um, yes, yes. And, and you have to you, want it. Exactly, you have to want it and unless they didn't. Mm. so yeah, yeah, yeah so maybe yeah. it's a timing thing yeah definitely yeah. I think rolling out for maybe older students we're still like thinking how can we iterate because it still makes sense and yes there's, yep. and there's like access to those sick people like to some of the people at Red Bull would be interested in doing that access to those people is invaluable but mm. how do you how do you do it in a way that they want it exactly yeah, yeah it's all about timing yeah it's all about timing but yeah you've learned so many great things definitely um, talking about that so you've been here for, is this the sixth day? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just all, it's <laughs> yeah, all merged yeah, into yeah. one. But um, what things have you learned um, in your time here that you're going to implement um, for TAG? I think I've, I learned, I learned that people, so I think for myself, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of, I'm this, I'm a pico's for my business, but these these first ten days are a lot about founder development, mm. which I think I've never got before. So I think Shade Brown said, um, "People will see your value before you even see it," and that struck me, mm. like because I don't think I had been like like for example, so it was easy ish to get into Facebook and it was easy ish to get into Google, and I didn't realize the value I was providing for them. Right. So a lot of the things that we've done, we haven't charged that much, so it's been completely free because I didn't realize the value that we provided to these people. Mm -hmm. And then even like the interest that I get here, I'm realizing, ah, oh, like there is there is something that people saw in myself that I didn't see, mm -hmm. um, and now I need to start leveraging that. So I think for myself personally, like. Now when I leave here, like understanding that, like, hey bro, like you're you're doing well and people see some sort of value, so maybe try and capture that value somehow and feed that back into tag. That Definitely. Mean? And then around building tag, I think how to create like brand partnerships better. Like so really understanding my values, understanding the, their values, their their values and their motives. Um so Sam do you know Liberty? Yes, actually. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. guy that runs it, I can't remember, I'm going to say his surname wrong, but he was here earlier. Okay. And he was like, oh, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, he was saying that, oh, like, when run, running Liberty, to get a brand partnership, maybe he spoke to someone senior and they said, oh, yeah, the CEO kind of wants an OBE. He mentioned it in passing. So it would be a good time for you, you to bring your social enterprise into there. I was thinking, crazy. I feel like I looked at what I saw on exterior, so mm. like a brand website, but that pro sometimes isn't enough to understand what is their real motive. Because if right, you know yeah. the CEO wants an OBE, you know you are in a perfect position to pitch your business to him. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like little things like that, like lever actually leveraging my network. So mm. leveraging my network isn't just saying, oh, hi, can you do this for me? Can you give me a space? Hi, can you do Like really, really see like and get Where, where can you add value? Yeah, where can you really add value, I guess? Mm. Yeah, definitely. I like that. That was good. Yeah, but that's that's what that's what your whole um, yeah. this whole chat's been about. It's yeah. been about adding value. Definitely, um, you're adding value to the students coming up, and um, what you've learned this week is mm -hmm. you, you you are adding a lot of value, but maybe you didn't realize it in yourself, and now mm. you're going to leave here knowing what that value is, mm. and that's going to feed back through the organization and through the students as well, and with the partnerships as well, man. So. Well done, man. Thank well done. you very much. Well done. Man. Where can people um, find Tag Online if, if there's any potential students listening? Um, how do they uh, get involved? If any students are listening or anyone's listening, our social media page is at the Advantage Group. Group is spelled GRP. And my personals are at Kwame GB. Kwame GB. Yeah. Cool, man. Get people to, to reach out to you for sure. Sweet. Yeah, man. It's been wicked having you on. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> All good, man. Nice one. Bless.